What's going on Warriors? Are we back in there? I'm not wasting any time. I'm going straight into the press conferences. I mean essentially what I want to do is I want to talk about Microsoft and Sony. But I think it's important to talk about Ubisoft, EA and Bethesda because they have press conferences. There wasn't too much from their press conferences so I'm going to talk about the big boys. Bethesda, essentially it was Quake and Dishonored 2. They did have the virtual reality of Fallout 4, but I haven't experienced Fallout 4, so it really, it's almost like it's falling on deaf ears with me. So, we are going to say Dishonored and Quake. Dishonored looks like a good game, but it's a first person game. I don't like first person games in general. Then you have a game like Quake, which is also first person, but it's a first person shooter. Now, I do like Halo, I have played Doom, and I, I did play Killzone. So there are certain type of games that I can deal with in first person. None of those games really did anything for me. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to give Bethesda, for me, N.A. Ubisoft. Kind of disappointing, if I'm being honest with you. They did make up for it with the Watch Dogs 2, because I did like the way they've approached Watch Dogs 2. The way they've come up with a very honest, which is the way it should always be, and no deception. They've shown the game how it's going to be when we get the game. They haven't deceived us with mad CG. With using us a high spec PC version that we're never going to get a hold of. And they showed the game in daytime. The game looks fun. It looks interesting. The hacking looks really cool. The mission that they showed during the E3 press conference was absolutely amazing. They showed how you could play the game. Not even go into the area. You could stay quite far away from the mission area. And complete the mission with hacking. Just using drones and buggies and your hacking device, your laptop, to wait to hack technology and steal information. So you could do a mission without even going anywhere near the mission area. Or you could go outside the mission area so you could hang around the building, run, walk to where points of the building that you need to get to, to complete the mission. Or you could go into the area and stealth it out completely, steal information. Or you could go to an area, use CQC. Lethal or non-lethal, or you can run in there, guns blazing, shooting at everybody, or you can go in there, guns blazing but non-lethal, or you can go in there, stealth, using technology, so you can go run behind a car, hack the, one of the security guard's phones, hack another security, um, basically a security guard is standing there, then you can hack a computer that's near him to start flashing, or whatever, and he goes towards it, and then you can make it short circuit or whatever and electrocute him so there's a lot of different ways that you can interact with missions and the way the mission was with the don't sweat the they had like a music theme playing called don't sweat the technique by eric b and rakim amazing because that took me back to my childhood man and have that mission with that music and the way the, it looked cool i'm hyped about mission i'm about Watch Dogs 2, about Dick Set. They actually sold me that game in the E3 press conference, and that's what I'm talking about. They actually sold me the game because I wasn't sold on the game. I really wasn't even that interested in it until the E3 demo. They sold me. That is amazing. That shows me good marketing and a good gameplay. So, well done. I'm going to get Watch Dogs 2. That was it for me, by, to be honest with you. Division really do do much for me because I know what the Division is. And I don't like the way they're approaching the game with like the updates and nerfing stuff and buffing stuff and changing all these kind of aspects of the game. But that's a different story for a different matter. Wildlands, don't really care about Wildlands because I look at the game and I've seen it before. The original um, Ghost Recon, Splinter Cell, I've seen it before. Don't really care about it, I'm not interested. So in terms of Watch Dogs, the highlight of E3 for me, but it wasn't enough to steal the show. The rest of the stuff they showed with like Steep and Star Trek, it really, the VR, as I told you before, I don't really know about VR. And that was a problem I had with Sony, a little bit too much VR. I've not experienced it. So for me, it's like I'm looking at a first person shooter game. Sorry. So what else did we have? We had EA. EA was kind of cool because they had Mass Effect Andromeda. And that was absolutely godlike, now I think about it. But everything else with EA was trash, absolute garbage. So we don't even care about them. What else did we have? We spoke about Ubisoft, we talked about EA, we talked about Bethesda, so that's done. So now, 
out of those guys, I would have to say Ubisoft won the developers' press conference purely off Watch Dogs. Boom. Take that. Now let's look at Microsoft and Sony. Microsoft, they showed Killer Instinct Season 3, General Rum. Do I care about Killer Instinct 3? Absolutely not. Game is garbage to me. But General Rum, the big motherfucker, dangerous motherfucker, cool looking motherfucker. So yeah, he looked cool in that game, but I'm not really interested in it. But yeah, General Rum. Then we had Thoughts of Horizon 3. Look really interesting. But I'm not really interested in those kind of driving simulator games. I'm more of a burnout, need for speed, hot pursuit kind of guy. So, yeah. You know, where it's kind of like arcade opposed to driving simulator. But I do appreciate a good looking driving game, just like I do with Gran Turismo. So, yeah. That game gets a thumbs up for me as well. They had Recall. Recall looks godlike. I would like to see more gameplay of Recall, to be honest with you. But from what I'm seeing, I'm still hyped about it. I'm still excited. And that was definitely a highlight of Microsoft press conference. When they showed the Xbox S, Xbox, um, Xbox One is not even good, but it's part of the family. And Project Scorpio. Amazing. Amazing. More powerful machine. Essentially, they're doing this for VR. Because the current Xbox will not be able to har uh, Xbox One will not be able to harness the power of virtual reality and 4K, which I do find this whole 4K thing interesting because the human eyes cannot process more than 2K, right? But they're releasing 4K, so I don't. We're never ever actually gonna get the full potential out of 4K. But whatever, it's there is what it is, and you know they might find a way for humans to be able to perceive 4K. But whatever, different subject, different conversation for a different time. So that is real interesting. What else did they have? They had scale bound, absolutely godlike. We just saw the armor you can have on the dragons, the way you can play with Drew, and more of his transformation, more of his skills. It's not as system heavy as I'm used to seeing a platinum games game. But it was still fascinating. It's still interesting how you can see that yeah, the four-player card, the graphics look much sharper, much cleaner. The frame rate, the bit rate, everything just looked more detailed. The lighting looked better. The you saw different types of um, spears and swords and shields and fighting styles. Different types of looking dragons, customization in dragons. The way you can see like how fucking epic the battles are going to be, and you need to have cooperation in order to do these battles like there actually needs to be teamwork so i'm hype about scale bound it was worth this weight in gold thank you microsoft uh, for doing good work uh what else did they have they had gears of war 4 god like i don't even care about gears of war 4 until this to be honest with you the demo sold me. I like the way you saw the the, the lighting effects, the juvies, the like, the new enemies, the the stage, the way everything was going off, everything was just blowing up. The the wind, the sandstorm, the lightning, the the enemies, the, the fatalities, everything. The way they were talking to each other, the way they were going to like um, when they're lifting up like a door or something like that. The way the camera go to like a dynamic a camera angle. Um, and the way they were talking with each other, I like it. I've actually started to care about the characters. Before I was asking myself, why would I care about any of these characters? I won't, and I don't. But now I do, and they pretty much sold me on the E3 demo. So bloody well done on that. Um, yeah. So those are what I'll say. Is that was that that was it for Microsoft, right? Yeah, pretty much that was it for Microsoft. So they get a double thumbs up from me. Then let's talk about Sony. Sony had. Oh no, let's take with Final Fantasy. They did have Final Fantasy demonstration on Microsoft, but with the Microsoft one, it was, it, I could see it was a good battle, but the person that was playing it was absolutely garbage. Like, the person that was playing that Final Fantasy 15 was shit. He made the game actually look garbage, but the game is godlike. They showed the Titan trial where you're fighting against your summon, because you have to prove yourself to your summon. You have to prove to Titan that you're worthy to wield his power, and I respect that. Yeah, but the guy that was playing was garbage. He made the battle look shit. But I could tell it was godlike. I could tell it was actually godlike. Oh yeah, I did forget to say that they had um, Halo Wars 2. But I didn't care about it. To be very honest with you. Uh, so yeah, that was pretty good. Then Microsoft press conference was excellent. 
So, yeah, I mean, so Sony's press conference was actually pretty fucking godlike. They had Horizon Zero Dawn, and I, I liked it. They showed more of gameplay. They showed more of the way you fight animals, what types of animals you fight, about traps, about building weapons, about obtaining tools, about um, obtaining equipment to make your tools. The character's interaction with other people, her motivations, what this character is. Because in the day for me, I have to know why I'm going to care for a character in a video game. It's not just a story. First of all, it's about gameplay. That's number one. Then second, it's about the character. Third, it's about the story. And then four, it's about the world. That's my order of how I care about things. And now I start to see more, I mean, with these guys, you have to bear in mind it is always going to be about graphics first, then story, then system. So what I've been waiting for is to see the actual system. What she fights, how does she fight the enemies, is it just going to be bow and arrows and just stealth? What is going on? Oh yo, the boy, IFC, I've started streaming on Twitch TV. Yeah, I'm going to watch that. Yeah, because it's my birthday. My birthday is going to be tomorrow. So today I've got the day off. I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. But today I'm just going to be chilling, man, and doing nothing. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's the boy, IFC Yipes. If you're playing watch t watch watching Twitch TV, he's definitely a streamer you should check out. He plays like Marvel and uh, fighting games and all those kind of new games that will be coming out. He'll be playing those games. So, yeah, check him out. So yeah, they got um, Horizon Zero Dawn. They had Last Guardian, um, and they said that game is going actually coming out this year. But um, I'm not going to hold my breath. Uh, I don't know why the game's taking so long anyway. But yeah, so that game's coming out. Uh, I don't have an opinion on that game. Uh, but Horizon Zero Dawn, really, really cool looking game. Uh, finally, I don't know. I don't feel like that's a game I'm going to get actually. But I do appreciate an okay, a good looking game. But I'm just not sold on it. I'm going to be very honest. Um, they had Mafia. Uh, what else they have? A game called Detroit. What was it? Detroit Become Human. Not interested. It, to me, it's like, um, what is it? Till Dawn or something like that. Those games where it's kind of like an interactive game. Where you can do different types of situations and scenarios. And make, based on your decision, will determine the outcome of that scene. Not interested. I, want, I like video games, that's not a video game, you're being passively entertained, it's an interactive movie of sorts, it's style over substance, so it doesn't really mean anything to me, so you can't fool me with that. They had another game called Days Gone, uh, another, what's that game called again? Uh, Last of Us, it's another Last of Us game, because I could see Sony really love that that look, the Last of Us look, and I do respect it, it is a nice looking game, but I feel you can oversaturate things when all you're doing is every E3, every year, you keep on releasing a game that looks like, uh, I mean Uncharted, um, Days Gone, and Last of Us, they look the same. And then Sonya are going to keep on turning up these games that look exactly the same as that. So, I mean, whatever. Looks cool. So, I guess keep doing it. I mean, it didn't really mean much to me because I'm not fooled by it. But, uh, yeah. Cool looking game. They had the game that blew my mind was... And this is a big deal for me. God of War. Uh, wow. Wow. Fucking wow, I can't believe it. Like I actually I'm, I want that I want that game. I don't like God of War. I don't like God of War. It doesn't mean anything. Kratos doesn't mean anything to me. But when I saw him in this, I thought to myself, yo, this character, man. The bit where his son shot him with an arrow, and then the kid was saying, sorry, sorry dad. Yeah, and then he was like Your deer is getting away. I was like, stop. God of War? Yo. Pretty much. Sony almost stole the show. With that game alone. 
they almost stole the show with that game alone. So yeah, God of War, that demo where they're fighting the they're fighting that boss with his son there. He wasn't even worried that his son was in danger because that's my son. He's got the got the blood of God running through his veins. If my boy can't survive this piece of shit, then that boy's not worth it to be alive, essentially. So yeah, like. That was pretty godlike. I really loved that. So that was really good. The one thing I didn't like was there was too much VR with Batman VR, Resident Evil 7 VR. It was too much VR. It was way too much. I don't have VR. I don't have 4K, man. So those things are useless to me. They don't mean anything to me. You're not showing me any video games. I mean, it's the future, right? I respect it, but there's nothing for me to play that is 4K. There's nothing, there's no movies for me to play on the 4K TV, so I'm not investing in 4K. There's no VR, so virtual reality doesn't mean anything to me right now. So for me, I can't really judge any of these games in 4K, in, um, 4K whatever, and virtual reality because I don't have any of those. As far as I'm concerned, it's like I'm looking at 1080p and a first person game and that doesn't do anything for me. Resident Evil 7, I was, I mean, I've played the Resident Evil 7 demo. It is actually unsettling. I actually played it at night time. I played it on 3D because the best thing I can do is 3D, my TV is 3D. And it was actually pretty amazing, I'll be honest with you. And at first hearing about first person Resident Evil, and it is first person only. Not hype. Not hype at all. Not happy. Um, but upon playing it, I can see it didn't feel like a Resident Evil. It doesn't have me. When I'm playing it, I feel like I'm playing a video game that is scary. But this is not a Resident Evil. I mean, I've been playing Resident Evil since 1996, right? So for you to reinvent the wheel now, for me, is difficult. But it is definitely interesting and unsettling. But I don't know. I really don't know. I'm just used to my zombies. I'm used to having a gun. I'm used to story. I'm used to a lot. But it did look. It was. It is. Play it. Play it. It's on PlayStation Network now. If you've got PlayStation Plus, it's really good. It just don't feel like a Resident Evil to me. So a part of me has died when I saw it was first person and we're not going to see people like Leon or Claire or any of those characters but I do understand you can't have those characters because those characters are essentially super people, they're, they're super zombie hunters so you can't have them anymore so I do understand that. I'd like to see more. It is definitely fascinating definitely interested and intriguing because the whole time I was playing that game I was gripped I was unsettled unnerved not scared but just unnerved and felt very uncomfortable but it was a good uncomfortable because I felt involved I only imagine what it's like in virtual reality it's just the fact that this I have to deal with the fact that this is my reality of Resident Evil and it is a tough bitter pill to swallow that this is going to be my Resident Evil 7 going forward first person I'd love it if they did an over the shoulder option but I can see if they did it over the shoulder it would lose its intense feeling uh, so what else do they have that the Batman virtual Batman virtual reality which look sounds shit uh, but there was a spider-man game by Somniac Games they are the only people that could do do um, a Spider-Man game. Sorry, my voice sounds a bit. I got a cold. Um, the Spider-Man game looked tremendous. It looked tremendous. I was like, "Are you kidding me? Are you fucking shitting me?" So yeah, I'm hyped about the Spider-Man game. Um, Resident Evil Seven surprised, uh, interested. Part of me is disappointed, but I explained why. Uh, the God of War, amazing. What else did they have? And that was pretty much it. They did have a Final Fantasy uh, 15 uh, remix trailer, which was pretty cool as well. But uh, yeah, so that was it. So what I would say on the whole, essentially is, it's difficult to say who won. I would say 
Microsoft one. I'd say Microsoft one. I mean, it's tough. I mean, for Sony, I would say the Spider-Man and the God of War. But I'd have to go Microsoft because of the Project Scorpio, because of the Gears of War, because of Scalebound, because of Recall, because they just got me. Okay, worries. I want to hear what you think about E3. Comment section, your turn. See you soon, Warriors. One last thing that I think is real important is Hideo Kojima's game, Death Stranded. It meant nothing to me. It just showed that he's making a game with normal readers. It didn't do anything for me. I just thought I would say that real quickly. I didn't want to mention it, but I thought I might as well because it's part of E3. So, yeah. Hideo Kojima game. Nothing. Alright, Warriors. Till my next video, stay blessed and have fun. See you in the comment section.